Hi there, I'm Nicole King. I'm the broker owner of 41 Realty Group in Billings, Montana, and this is Ian Ullman with Guaranteed Rate. And today we are continuing our discussion of the buying and selling process flowchart, which is up on your screen now. Today we're going to cover how to prepare a property or listing so that it is fully ready um, for buyers to look at and for lending to go through. Yeah, definitely. So like we talked about on a couple of the videos on the lending side, there are certain loan programs that have specific property requirements. Uh, the most common examples, and this is just a couple of examples, FHA doesn't allow for peeling paint anywhere on the subject property, and USDA or rural development loans can't have any commercial or income producing qualities uh, to them since it's a residential housing product. Awesome. So that's a, there's a really long list, right? Oh, absolutely. That's just a those are the, tiny bit yeah. of what we're looking for. Yeah, those are two that we see very commonly come up. Absolutely. Yeah, I see peeling paint all the time when I go to visit properties for the initial real estate walkthrough. And then there's a lot of properties that make it to market that still have peeling paint and things like that. Um, our office, with assistance of you and a couple other lenders in the area, put together a, a long checklist. It's front and back of mm -hmm. a piece of paper that we walk through with our sellers prior to listing um, so that we can head off a lot of that. We can get ahead of any peeling paint or broken window panes or doors that don't lock or are damaged. It's, it's an interesting and rather nitpicky list. Um, so I think when sellers are first thinking about listing a property, that's the very first thing to start with is yeah. doing a really thorough walk around the property inside and outside with a qualified agent who really understands all those different property conditions and has experience um, getting ahead of that. Because in our area, there's a lot of people who use VA loans, FHA loans, and rural development loans. Yeah. Um, I don't know the percentages, you probably don't either, but it's, it's a large percentage of the buyers. And so if a house is not ready for those buyers, it takes them all out of the market. Right. And well, then you're left with strong conventional and cash. Yeah, I mean, or the, the flip side is it all of a sudden becomes an urgency issue yes. where now we're under contract, we're rolling through, and we have to remedy these things under yeah. a timeline. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, being ahead of the game is huge. Yeah, I cannot tell you how many times I've had to meet at the property with an agent and seller and the buyer, and we're scraping the siding and repainting to get, you know, ahead of an appraisal visit or switching out GFCI outlets. That's an interesting one that seems really small, but is a safety issue that in laundry rooms, kitchens, bathrooms, anywhere that there's water near electricity, they've got to be GFCI protected. And so that's an easy one to miss. And we do a lot of switching out of outlets. Yeah. I mean, and, and a lot of us, like my wife and I have never sold our own home. You know, we've never sold a home. We live in the first one we bought. But yep. our front door jam has this big of a spot of peeled paint. Technically Ooh. wouldn't qualify FHA. You better get that touched up before there's some damage to it. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And that's an important other thing to think about is that we think of things like paint as cosmetic right. and it's not. It is the protection for the home. Right. So there could be little tasks like that that we're like, oh, I'll get to it someday or it's not that big a deal. But you leave something like peeling paint around a window or something unpainted for a long period of time and all of a sudden you've got wood rot, water entry, all these other issues yeah. that cascade. Yeah. So, the other big part of preparing a property for listing is getting ready for photos. Mm -hmm. um, photos should be professionally taken. There's a lot of um, listing photos that I see that are taken with cell phones. Um, there was even one here in Billings where uh, there was a person just covered up in the bed. That was the person in the bed in the listing photo. So. Uh, I'm going to give whoever that was the benefit of the doubt that there was some reason that that person could not be taken out of bed, but maybe better to just not photograph that room than to include that. So Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, and it makes such a difference, um, I feel, for the marketability oh my of, of the property. You know, if the pictures are, are clear and crisp and well lit and not blurry and all, and the right angles too. I mean, you can visually it's a drastic difference yeah. when a professional does it versus if I just wing it with my cell phone, which has a great camera for a schmuck, but it's not <laughs> the same as a professional photographer. No, especially when well over 90% of the buyers with their um, poll about where would they find their house, yeah. it was either an online link that their agent sent to them 
during the process, or they found it online themselves wow. and then contacted an agent and purchased it that way. Yeah. Um, so it has to have a really good online presence because that's where most buyers are going to see that property well before they ever set foot. And those photos need to make that buyer want to come to the property. Yeah. So um, yeah, quality listing photos, professional photos. The other thing is decluttering and, and that kind of stuff and staging. So for the most part, a seller can rearrange their own belongings. We sometimes need to bring in a stager for, you know, either supplementing what the seller already owns or rearranging what they have. Mm -hmm. um, and those professionals do cost money. So um, the the part of the decluttering is a little bit harder. There's not as many professionals. There are some um, companies that will help with uh, tearing down, selling. Uh, removing items, things like that, and even packing in mm. for some circumstances, which is helpful. Um, but what we tell people is, you know, to go through their house and look at things from the perspective of what can they sell, give yeah. away, you know, pack up right now. Yeah. If they're not going to take it to their next house, they know for sure they're not going to, and it's not going to make the room really empty or weird looking to mm. go ahead and get rid of that now. Do it. Get ahead of that process. Make your actual packing less stressful, less yeah. to do, do it now. If they're not gonna use it, like if they're listing at the beginning of summer and they can put all their winter gear away, mm -hmm. awesome. Get get that out of those closets, make those closets feel really spacious, that kind of stuff. Um, pack those things up now um, instead of waiting until the last minute. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, next week, I think we're gonna be covering uh, the actual process of listing, like getting all the documents signed and everything. Is there anything else that you wanted to cover on prepping the property though? Uh, I don't believe so. Just listen mainly to your agent. It's much more their specialty than ours on the lending side. Um, but again, if there are questions, myself and other lenders in the market are available to help answer. Um, you know, do you perceive this being an issue for potential buyers or when it comes to the appraisal? So we're always glad to help. Awesome. And if you do want to see that list of all the different items that could potentially be called out for FHA, VA, or rural development loans, we would love to send that to you and, and help you get your property prepped for sale. Just shoot us a message and we can get that to you. Um, and then we can also send you that full buying and selling flowchart that you saw at the beginning of the video in case you want to see the entire process. We'll see you in the next video.